I'm Neil Gornflow with Shareable Magazine, and I'm, I'm here with Michael Keating of Scoot Networks. Um, and you have something really cool going on, Michael, and I want to, let's, let's learn about it. Um, so first, like, tell me, tell me what Scoot Networks is. Sure. We, we describe ourselves as a zip car, but with electric Vespas. So we are a shared scooter service, and our vehicles are plug-in electric Vespa-style motor scooters. And we make them available to people uh, through their smartphones. Uh, you can find your scooter with a smartphone and uh, unlock it. It becomes your dashboard when you're riding it. And that's how we uh, track the scooter, and it's how we bill you, and um, it's how you know where you are in the city. So it's a, it's a kind of a combination of the electric motor scooters and smartphones and sharing. Well, so it's like a scooter available in the cloud. <laughs> scooter cloud. Yeah, it's sort of like that. It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely one that you can just grab when you need it. I mean, right. it's sort of, it's, it's cloud, I guess cloud-like in that sense. But um, yeah, it's, you join the service like you would join Zipcar, and, um, and you use them sort of like their Zipcars for now. And then eventually when we have a big enough network, you'll be able to take one-way trips with them. So pick them up one place and drop them off someplace else. Right, like car to go like Donler's car to go service, right? Or, or, or bicycle sharing. Or bicycle sharing. Yeah. Well, okay, that's a cool idea. Um, but first, I want to learn though, like, how, like, how did you get this idea? Uh, there's a lot of cool transportation plays out there. We see, oh, you know, like um, Sidecar just launched like on Tuesday, Very cool. and uh, you know, Relay Rides is getting lots of traction. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there was a story in Time Magazine about Relay Rides, and then recently uh, Jessica Scorpio, I think, was on the cover of, of Get Around, mm -hmm. was on the cover of Inc. Oh, wow. magazine. That's so, very good. so like this, this uh, space is getting a lot of attention. Yeah. Like, how did you come up with the idea uh, originally? Like, what, what happened? I, I was looking for a way to to come up with a better form of transportation for cities. And I saw a lot of really interesting innovation happening around cars. So the, all the companies you've mentioned doing really interesting things with cars. Uh, make it easier for you to not own a car or get a car when you don't own a car or get a taxi-like service. I mean, all sorts of really interesting innovation around cars. But my concern was that I think cars aren't a very good way to get around within cities. They're a really awesome form of transportation, and particularly if you're leaving the city and going anywhere you know, outside of a crowded, congested city. A car is really the best way to get there uh, in most cases. But we wanted something that really fit on a city street, and right. we thought that you know electric cars are cool, but they're still cars, and share, shared cars are cool, but they're still cars, and self-driving cars from Google are, are even cooler, but they're still you know 150 square feet, three, four thousand pounds, hundreds of horsepower, and um, they're they're dangerous. They cause traffic. I mean, they just don't really right. I mean, like cars are like total overkill, aren't they? Like when you really think about it, yeah. For most of your trips, yeah. right? If you you know people like the idea of the long tail and a lot of different things on the web. You know, they, if you think about the long tail of your transportation diet, like the big things are your plane tickets you buy, or the cars that you rent, or the taxis that you take. And then as you get down the curve, there's there's all these little trips you take to the grocery store, to work every day, to the gym, to the restaurant, that are quick little trips around the city that you, if you take your bike, you don't pay anything for them. If you take Muni, you pay a couple bucks. If you take a taxi, you, you know, pay more than that. And it's that long tail, those short trips that don't leave the city, that are just helping you get around town. That's what we want to address. And we didn't think cars were a very good way to address that, just because they take up so much space in the city and they're so dangerous to pedestrians and cyclists. We wanted a two-wheeled mode, but we felt that cycling was what it was starting to hit its its limit, at least in the U.S. I mean, it's bike share is great; like it's it gets a lot more people on bikes, but. It, I don't think we're going to become Copenhagen anytime soon, and so I was looking for another two-wheeled mode that right. would com actually compete with drive, you know, would compete with the car fast enough to compete with the car, but but two wheels, and so you know, really efficient for the city. Right, right. I think we have far to go for, for bikes, but I think there's space for this too. Yeah. Um, and and so that's really interesting how you see how it fits in into these different modes. It, it fills a, a specific niche, sort of short trips. How would you describe like the niche that you're trying to fill and the transportation diet? Um, it's. I see it as um, kind of the coffee in your transportation yeah. diet. I mean, in the sense, it's sort of the, it's the thing you do every day. You get up in the morning, you have a cup of coffee, you go to work. You know, I think for some of our users, it's going to be their coffee. It's going to be, and then you got to get somewhere in the afternoon. You know, take a scoot. You know, just like you. It's the, it's something that it's like a multi multiple times a day kind of essential part of how you get around. For other users, for who don't, uh, you know, have an, a way of getting to work that they like and they don't want to switch to scoot. It's a little bit more like a smoothie. I mean, and, and the way, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. like biking is kind of like the salad in your transportation diet. It's like really good for you. It's really good for the city. Like, 
really dedicated, responsible people bike every day and eat salad every day, but most people don't eat salad every day and they drive their cars everywhere. And Yeah, they eat steak, they drive a car. Yeah, right? it's, it's like the, sta- the car is like the cheeseburger or the pizza slice of your transportation diet. And, <laughs> and, and we think that we're, we're healthy, but we're like a little sweeter, a little easier. And yeah, that's it. So we're, I think for some people, we're going to be like a cup of coffee and for some people, we're going to be like a smoothie. It's like every once in a while, you know, grab a scoot, go someplace. Okay, so how does it work? Like the pricing and the membership, like what, what's the problem? process for the user, like what do they do? So you sign up, uh, we, um, we check your driver's license, make sure that you have a clean driving record, you're old enough, um, and uh, so it's 21 plus for us, just um, like most other services yeah. like this. And once we get you oriented, so we want to yeah. we want to make sure you know how to ride a scooter. I think the car services uh, they know that most people know how to drive a car, and the bike like most people are sort of assumed to know how to ride a bike. Most people have never ridden a motor scooter before, so it's actually really really easy. But we want to make sure that you're going to ride safely and smart, and that you know how to use the scooter. So everyone who joins gets an orientation with us, and we ride with you for at least part of your first ride to sort of give you that safety mindset and you know, show you how to be a two-wheel rider on a city street if right. you're not familiar right, right, with that. Right. And then once you're oriented, you can just sign out a scooter whenever you want. Right. Yeah, you don't want a bunch of evil canoodles going around on, on your scoots like with your Definitely brand not. on there. Right? No, no, we don't. Um, so so that's, that's, that's really interesting. The, the, um, I'm wondering like, uh, What's what's going on now though? Like so, I, so I, we were chatting off camera, and it sounds like you're about to. I don't know. Can we talk about this about your investment? Like, you, did, are you about to close something? We are. So we. I don't think we want to. We don't want to sort of speak prematurely about it. But we've just received a bunch of commitments from a bunch of really awesome investors, okay. and um, we are. It's not completely closed. There's just still a little bit of room in the round, and um, we expect that'll be done fairly shortly. But uh, we're. It's not completely done, so I don't think we. Okay. Wanna, so you can't make an announcement about like who it is or anything. Definitely not right now. Okay. But okay. we have really cool people who've um, written some checks to Scoot to make it possible, and we're really proud to have them involved, and we'll be in a little bit better position to talk about it eventually. Yeah, congratulations. Thank That's you. great. All right. That must feel good. Yeah. Um, and, and so then where are you in the development of the of the service? Like, how, how long have you been trialing it? I know that. How long have you been trialing it? How many rides do you have? What have you learned? So we've only been rolling for about three weeks, and it's all been here at the hub. So we have three scooters on the road, about 70 members. About half of them have taken their orientation and have started riding. And um, we've learned that some people really like to commute on it. They, they, right. they think it's, it just changes. There, uh, there's one person said they got they took the scoot home at night and they brought it back in the morning, which is one of our use cases. And they showed up. And they just said that they felt so relaxed and were in such a good mood all day because they hadn't been uh, you know packed on a, a bus all the way to work that day, or they hadn't been sort of fighting their way through traffic on their bike. Right. And they're just re- they're just in a really good mood. So we were happy to hear that, and we're also happy to see people using it for business uh, errands and stuff, meetings. You know, instead of taking a taxi, which could be a lot more expensive than a scoot, just having a scoot, going to their meeting, doing their thing, come back. It's a really affordable way for them to get around town just for short uh, business related trips. So we've, we've heard both of those things and we're just trying to get more people on, more people riding. So in here what I'm hearing is that there's potential for like a kind of a better experience. Like describe that, like why is it better to take a, a scooter than a scoot than, you know, say a bike or, or a car or whatnot? Well, I like, I love riding it personally. I think it's, um, it's fun. I mean, in the same way that riding a bike is fun, riding a scooter is fun, because you're on two wheels and you're sort of, you're sort of, you know, carving your way through the city, and that is, that's a really fun experience, particularly if you don't have to pedal, which is, uh, which makes it, uh, makes it's it a little easier. too, right? Yeah, it's you know, certainly on the hills, it makes the whole prospect of you know going someplace on two wheels a lot easier when you have a little bit of a motor under you, and uh, so that's all. That's like part of the fun of it. Um, you also you can ride with the cars. It only it tops out a little south of 30 miles an hour, but that's fast enough to keep up with cars on most San Francisco streets, which is different from a bike where you're kind of on the margin. Even if you're in a bike lane, you're always getting buzzed by cars, and it's kind of stressful. It's, it doesn't feel that safe. But when you have your own lane, so you're kind of in the flow, so the same speed. You're in the flow. Yeah. Right. And you and you you take you're in the the, the car lanes. You're not, you can't use the, the bike lanes. No right? bike lanes. Scoots right? are not for bike lanes. Okay. And then what's the deal on parking? You can park it. It's really easy to park. That's one of the nice things about it is you can you can park in a lot of different places. I usually am able to find parking right in front of wherever I'm going. And uh, there's scoot designated motorcycle and scooter parking around the city that you can use. You can park in spaces where cars park. Uh, there, one of the tricks though is if it's a metered space, 
and yeah. the car that paid the meter, if the meter runs out, both of you get a huge ticket. Right. So, but you can you can kind of like slide in in the same space that a car is in. Right. right. You got to watch out that, that that you're not behind a truck or something that can't see you. Otherwise, they back up and they might knock over your scooter. So there's there's tricks that you got to learn. Right. But it's I find that I save a ton of time parking and a ton of stress, like not having to circle the block looking for a place to park. And um, I think that's part of what makes the experience positive. It's uh, right. it's just um it's really it's really easy and fun. Yeah, and then you can't park on on sidewalks, right? You can't. You see people out in the neighborhoods yeah. doing that, where it's less less crowded. They park their scooter on the sidewalk in front of their house, but in the downtown, you're not supposed to. Do that. Right, you'll get a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. So what's the deal? Like, I know that uh, uh, City Car Share is going to introduce um, electric bikes yeah. and make that part of their mix. Like, so. So why didn't you guys go with um, with electric bikes? They seem they seem you know less expensive, perhaps lighter. Mm -hmm. There's some advantages, but like what's your what's your take on that? Uh, so the the main things are the speed. So electric bikes top out at 20 miles an hour, and so they really are for the bike lanes, and they can't uh, really so they keep up lanes. with cars. Yeah, okay. I mean they're a fast way to get through a bike lane, and we really want to be in the flow with the cars because it, it just it feels safer. It, um, I think we think it actually is safer, and and it's and the speed is great. It's nice to be able to go a little faster. You know, 25, maybe 30 miles an hour is a, it makes a difference over the bike. Also, the scooter is a different form factor. You, know, you sit on it. You don't. I mean, you don't sort of straddle a little bike seat and you have pedals to operate and stuff like that. So it's a it's a little bit more comfortable, and right. it's, the weight of the scooter actually feels very stable when you're riding it because you have a big battery under you. Whereas when you're on an electric bike or any kind of bike, you're the heaviest part of it, and you're sort of perched on top of this very light frame, which is just a different it's a, it's it's subtle, but it's a different feel. It's a different feel, and that is that's the main reason we went with the scooters. Plus, also people are people like scooters. Like they want they want to try them out. They want to check them out. And I have noticed that there are like increasing numbers of scooters, and you see, well, at least it seems to me that, like there's a lot of women on scooters these days. Like, is there like a gender dimension to, to the service and to use of scooters? We haven't seen it in our own service, but I think, and I don't know the exact data, but if you just stand on a street corner in San Francisco for an hour, I think you will see more men on motorcycles and more women on scooters. But I think that's really if you own one, and and I think there's a difference between, and this gets to sort of sharing. I think there's a difference between the things that you want to own for yourself and the things that you're willing to share and use. And it, the analogy I make for people is that you might take a taxi if you need to get somewhere quickly, but you're probably not going to buy a Crown Victoria for your personal use. I mean, you don't, you don't really seem like a Crown Vic kind of guy, Neil, and, I, and, I, and you know, neither am I. But I'll jump in a taxi in a second, and I don't feel like I'm branding myself by riding in a Crown Victoria if it's a taxi, but if I bought one, I think it would be a different kind of statement. And so I think, I think men and women can both jump on the scooters and feel like you know, they're just doing their thing. They're just getting someplace. It's just, it's just how they're, it, it's not, they're not saying, oh, I'm a scooter guy or I'm a scooter right. girl or something like that. Whereas if you buy a Harley, you're making a real what statement. You, people about aren't joining like the scooter gang on their scoot? Or what? There are, I think there are some, there are scooter gangs in San Francisco, but they're pretty small. And I think they're actually split pretty evenly between men and women. Right, right. Um, all right, so let's talk about what's next. Um, I know you're doing the trial, but you're three weeks in. Mm -hmm. And um, what's really interesting is that you've decided to um, start your trial here at the Hub co-working. And I think that's a really interesting sort of like piggybacking one sort of sharing economy service co-working onto an, you know, yeah. piggy piggybacking off of that. So mm -hmm. like explain like the logic behind that and what kind of relationship you have with the hub. How's that, how is that working? Sure. Uh, we were looking for early adopters, yeah. so and we thought that people who are already sharing something important in their lives, in this case their workspace, they would be more uh, interested in sharing their transportation. So that is why we chose to be here, and the hub is just a great facilitator and convener of a lot of things in both the social enterprise world, and you know, we consider ourselves a social enterprise, and they're you know, green vehicles and trying to make the city work better, and, uh, and also in the sharing economy. So they were really excited to have a shared transportation service be sort of a part of what is available to the hub members, and they're just very supportive of us coming and um, and connecting right. with the membership here. So, so I'm a, a hub member. Yeah. Like, so I can become a member of Scoot. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I yeah. thought you'd signed up. Already. <laughs> I signed up already. <laughs> well, I have to like fill out the paperwork after this. It takes two That's, seconds. Okay, cool. I'm gonna I'm actually do that. I think okay. it's cool. I'm gonna I want to try it out. Good. Um, and and uh, so then. 
after this trial, like, what's the, what's the ambition? Like, what's the rollout strategy? So we're going to continue to expand in other uh, workspaces in Soma, and that could be other co-working spaces okay. or maybe other uh, tech companies who want this available to their employees. So we're starting with workspaces because we think that work is what induces most local travel. I mean, it's your commute, it's your business meetings, things like that. So we want to be a part of that. Going to lunch. Uh, going to lunch, yeah, all those kinds of things. Those are all short little trips, and a lot of them are really well suited for a scoop. So we're starting with the, co with the workspaces, and we're going to stay more or less on that strategy for the rest of the year. Uh, we will then begin to open things up to the public in early 2013. Right, you guys should go to the co-working unconference uh, in Austin uh, in March. That sounds a great idea. Yeah, you guys should yeah. check it out. It's cool. awesome that all the co-working community gets together. Cool. So I think they'd be pretty excited to hear a little more about Scoot. For awesome. sure. We'd love to do that. Because um, I, I see a lot of, this is one thing that we've been, you know, kind of advocating in that community is like, you know, add value to your members um, and save them money and, and give them access to more services through sharing economy services. So um, I think it's really promising. Um, so, okay, so you're going to, you're going to, this is your strategy for San Francisco. Do you have global ambitions, like uh, national and global ambitions? Yeah, we do. Uh -huh. the, the electric motor scooter is the fastest, um, it's the, rather, it's the cheapest form of personal transportation over 20 miles an hour anywhere. So it's not just a high tech thing for San Franciscans with smartphones. It's it, actually 90. 7% of all the electric motor scooters in the world are on the road in China now. And there is well, how many are in the market now? Uh, 20 to 30 million. Okay. So it's a really big fleet and they're all really new. What is it growing annually? What's the growth About 10 million vehicles a year. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's so it's going like, like double, this. it's like hit hockey stick growth on the, on the yeah. electric. Yeah, it's right? well, we're all familiar with the urbanization trend in China. Uh, all those folks who are coming to those cities and are beginning to make enough money that they would like a personal vehicle, they don't want to take transit, are preferring an electric bike or an electric scooter as their way of getting right. around. And that's been, um, uh, it's just been a huge, and they, they, combined with that, there are some limitations on gas two wheels over there that yeah. channeled all that demand into the electric two wheel market. Okay, and so cool. we're actually just taking advantage of a huge uh, scale economy in China. And we're buying kind of very high end Chinese scooters and then adding our network technology to them. So our global ambition is it's global. We think that most major cities in the world have bad traffic are clogged with cars, have transit that doesn't go as fast as people want it to go, you know, people struggle with parking, and they need personal mobility that's flexible right. and convenient and right, cheap right, right. and fast. And so I, I think, will we be in every city? Probably not, but I think we can go to a lot of cities. A lot of cities, yeah. right. Yeah, and I saw outside, I saw your, um, one of your, your scoots, mm -hmm. and it had this um, plexiglass round case thing. What, what's that? That's the smartphone dock. So we remove the old school sort of needle gauge instrument panel from the scooter and we put in the smartphone dock and that's where you put your smartphone and you plug it in and then the smartphone talks to the scooter and talks to our server and uh, it authenticates you, it checks you out and then it allows you to turn the scooter on with your phone and when the scooter is on, the phone turns into a dashboard using a map just like you would have a normal map. Does it like show speed? Yeah, speed and battery. It's your, stuff oh my god, that's yeah, awesome. It becomes your dashboard. Right. So that, that's how you check it out. You actually check out the scooter with your uh, with your smartphone. With your right? own smartphone. So does it, is it like iPhone and Android? Yeah. You've got both working, yeah. right? Yeah, we're actually that's working amazing. on our Android app now. We could use an Android app developer, but we have an iPhone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, well, I, that's, this sounds awesome. I'm going to I'm gonna sign up after this. Please and, do. And uh, thanks, Michael, for talking to Sherbel Magazine about, about Scoot Networks. Appreciate it. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.